Yeah. Hey, uh, you know, we're having a lot of fun and games here before the show, but uh, uh, I got this letter. Uh, it's a cease and desist from Milwaukee. What? Uh, some guy named Marcus claiming he's got the name, the naming rights to court cousins. Mar- Marcus? Marcus who? Uh, DeMarcus. <laughs> Welcome to Court Cousins. Two cousins sharing laughs and talking the team they love. The Orlando Magic. Let's get into it. Welcome, everybody, to episode eight of Court Cousins. My name is Kyle. I'm joined, as always, by my co host, my cousin, Jason the Peach. We are recording this on, let me not get the date wrong, this time, Wednesday, December 8th, just before the Sacramento Kings versus our Orlando Magic. We've got a great show today, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to check in with each other through our Rolo check-in. We'll scour the interwebs for the social media roundup. Peach will tell us what I learned during the last set of games. Then we're going to go into an oldie and a goodie, fact or fiction, before ending out today's show with a set of wagers for our court cousin championship. And first, as we like to do and many shows do, We want to check in with each other, see how each other's doing. We do it a little different here, though. We do it on the meter of a Robin Lopez. So, Peach, I'll ask you first. How you doing for the Rolo check-in, sir? Well, you know, I was feeling one way, Rolo-y, when I was researching for a picture for today. I found a couple of gems uh, that just completely changed my mood into this whole different state, which is great. Uh, it's Rolo and he's here on stage with Mariah Carey. This happened in Las Vegas a few years back. Such a lucky man. I'm such a huge Mariah Carey fan. I had no idea that these two entities had ever shared the same stage. This is amazing. What a great way that must've been to spend your bir- his birthday. And, uh, oh man, Rolo just with Mariah Carey, because all I want for Christmas is, is her really honestly, <laughs> but instead I have you and I'm not upset about it. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. we're, I've decked my halls and it's Christmas time and we're feeling that Christmas vibe. So I went with Mariah Carey and, and, and Rolo on this one. Uh, <laughs> how are you feeling about it? Where, where, where are you at on the check-in today? Well, Mariah Carey, man, she hit right at puberty for me. So that's making me feel some type of way. I don't know if I might need to step away from the show for a moment, but for me, hmm. I am a Chicago Bulls Rolo. I've no, I I've taken some Chicago Bulls Rolos before, But this photo, he is getting smacked right in the face with a basketball, some type of deflection, right in the noggin. That's kind of how I'm feeling right now. I know the holidays are a fun time. I'm definitely excited for winter break. But there's also that kind of traffic jam that comes up to the holiday. I'm in grad school. I got a bunch of stuff work for that. Stuff at school, we got to finish up. All the anticipation of the holiday. I'm very anxious, you know, so all that stuff kind of conflates into one beautiful ball of stress for me. So I'm trying to process it. I know it's all going to be okay. I'm excited for the holiday to come, but right now it's hitting me in the face Mm. and it's, it's making me a little uneasy. So I'm, I'm definitely pumped though for basketball because this is a respite this time that we have right now is a little time away. I'm pumped for the game tonight, even though it's way past my bedtime. Woo, Any it other... so is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm normally in sleep by like nine o'clock. I took a nap today, though, to get ready for this. So I, I'm, I'm going to be there. All right. I'm looking forward to it. I love the late games. It gives me something to watch late at night. <laughs> normally, after our Rolo checking, we kind of leave Rolo to the side. We love him, but he hasn't been a huge part of the team. But not today, Pish. Today, we are giving him a seat at the head of the table to start our social media roundup. And in this segment, ladies and gentlemen, this is where we scour the interwebs for your tweets, your posts, your grams, your glicks, your tots. I'm old. I don't know all the stuff. And we compile it here to talk about what the Twitter sphere, what the Orlando magic internet is saying about our team, the Orlando magic. And as said, we're starting off with Robin Lopez, Mm -hmm. a tweet from magic player history at magic player history 
a great follow. We've talked about this on a previous pod. He mm -hmm. does the updates after some games, after a set of games on how the current roster, current magic are stacking up against the lifetime, the historic magic. And for Rolo, who hasn't gotten a lot of burn, the stats for this are blocks. At the beginning of the season, he had zero. He now has five. That puts him in 152nd place. For game started, one. He is now in 166th place. And for defensive rebounds, offensive rebounds, he has 12 now this season in 170th place in Orlando Magic history. I mean, we, we got to open the halls for this man. I mean, he's, he's going to be go down enshrined in magic history. Am, am I, am I wrong? Peach? I mean, some, yeah, some players need to play a long time in a place to make a connection to the town or the team. Um, but I think Rolo is that kind of guy that whatever town he Rolo's into, uh, he's just going to be beloved by the fans. I mean, obviously a man who has the charisma enough to appear on stage with Mariah Carey as previously Oof. seen uh, and, and loves Disney and it's just all over the place. I mean, I, this is a relationship that I hope continues long past this season. I hope he rises on this list, but even if he doesn't, he still has one more game started for the Orlando Magic than you and I. And to that, we give you a tip of the hat, sir. Rolo Magic Legend. The next, the next tweet is from, or post, I'm not sure where this came from, is at Orlando Meme, a great follow. And this is near and dear to my heart because I'm a Star Wars nut. I'm not sure if you can see some of my Star Wars behind me. I've got a little mm -hmm. Darth Vader and Han Solo there. And this is channeling that Dark Emperor, that Emperor Palpatine energy because you have a Kermit the Frog on the left and then a hooded Kermit the Frog, very much Emperor Palpatine on the right. The left Kermit is saying, a win tonight. Well, that's not a good Kermit voice. I can't. Can you do a Kermit voice? A win tonight versus the Rockets would be fun and a big confidence boost for the players. He didn't know I had a Kermit. I did not, he was not ready. I did not expect that shit to be that good, dude. Uh, Kermit's one of my guys. I can do okay, that. Okay. All right. All right. Well, now I have a challenge for you, Peach. Yes. Your Emperor Palpatine, Kermit. Go. Okay. Let's see what I got. Yeah. A loss would be a <laughs> massive for the tank. It's almost a little Yoda. It is. It, that's is a little Yoda. opposite here. But yeah. let's be honest. If Kermit had made some other life choices, he could have been Yoda. <laughs> they probably both tried out for the part. Let's go. <laughs> so, what do you think about the ethos of this of this post? The 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 dueling coyotes inside of the two wolves inside every Magic fan right now where we like the wins, but they're not coming this year. And in the back of your mind, you're, you're looking at the, the upcoming draft board. How are you feeling in this uh, quagmire, Peach? Uh, well, in years past, I'm very easy to let the loss flow through you, you know, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm not seeing anything on the draft board that I'm really excited about yet. I have not watched a ton of college basketball yet, so there's nobody I'm in love with. Um, this isn't like when Shaquille O'Neal was going to become available and it's like, we must tank, like yeah. we, we need to be a part of this. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's not a, a year where there's a LeBron sitting there where you're like, we have to have this guy. Like right now I'm not seeing anything that I need. So I don't feel like the tank is important because we're going to be in a top five, top six position for a pick most likely, yeah. which still means we're going to get a good shot at winning the lottery or get a good player. I don't see one that's heading above. So I'm kind of not for the tank anymore. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to take the, uh, I'm going to take the, the good side, I guess. Oh, you're on the light side. Hmm. I think, yeah, I'm there with you, dude. I, I think that the losses are going to come. I, I've been in, even though we've been losing a lot of games, I have been enjoying watching them. I don't know if it's the pod or just doing it with you or what, but I've still been having a bunch of fun watching the losses. Our belief should be that we have the guys on the roster that can make the, the leap. I hope we're going to talk about some of those guys in the rest of the show, but I think mm -hmm. that, you know, wanting the losses right now is, I don't know, a little too early, a little dire. Yeah. A little mm -hmm. dire, a little too early. And I think that more wins are going to come later. We do have an easier schedule as the season goes on. I think if you're already in the tank side, if you're letting the loss flow through you, 
then you're going to be sorely mistaken. Cause I do think we will have a top 10 ish pick, but I could see a possibility where we get our guys healthy and we go on kind of a run at the end of the season. And, and we're not even in the combo for those, you know, top five picks. Just trying to set expectations here. Magic fans don't want anyone to get too carried away with the tank and then be disappointed when we're winning at the end of the seasons. Cause that's really the goal. We want some of these guys to get some wins, to make some leaps and to become the guys that can take us yeah. away from the tank. I think we'll touch on that later a little bit in factor fiction. I have we guys. will indeed. We will indeed. And then maybe when some of these guys take their leap, we'll get some of that media attention that we deserve Peach. Mm. And our boy, Donnie dabs at Donnie TT two had a post about this same issue. He says, you want to talk about media attention? And we've got a little scene here with a Kings character and a Spurs character arguing about who's getting, who gets less media attention, a race to the bottom, if you will. And off screen, someone says, amateurs. And the two characters says, what was that punk? In this bar scene here. And then turning around in the cloak. This gives me like Hobbit vibes. We have the Orlando Magic. Amateurs almost yeah. challenging the Spurs and the Sacramento character to come at him. Do we truly get less media attention than the Spurs and the Kings? I mean, the Spurs is an odd choice on this one. I think they don't get the run right now because there's nobody exciting down there and nothing much going on, but they've won championships recently and they still got pop at the helm. So they get a yeah. certain amount of coverage. Sacramento definitely has beef here. I mean, you never hear anything about Sacramento unless it's one of their good players getting ready to leave town. Uh, after their rookie yeah. contract runs out, um, which, you know, sucks, but uh, is a fact. I do feel like at least they're in the capital of California. So at least they have that going for them. Um, I, I, okay. I feel like sadly we lead the league in being at the bottom of people's knowledge. I mean, how many times do you tell people we're doing a podcast about the Orlando magic and they're just like, Whoa, why? Who? Who? Like, Why? <laughs> yeah, or or who? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like who? Oh, are they? Were they? Are they, are they soccer? Are they a soccer team? <laughs> Football? What? <laughs> what league are they in? Is that about? It's college. <laughs> it's like, uh, so I mean, they're clearly not out there as much as they were in the Shaq Penny days and even the Dwight days, where we're getting some run on the playoff. But you know, you have to perform to get eyeballs on you there has to be a reason for people to talk about you and you have to create that and it can't just be piling up losses you have to have stars right now cole anthony is getting a little bit of chatter because he's, you know people are talking about him and that's good but you need more of that to get recognized and i'll say this for sacramento they've had some good players go through there that were worth talking about and aside from our fire sale last year where we got rid of stuff there hasn't been much notable that the magic have done in a while so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that is crazy that the, the most media attention we got was when we traded our whole team and people were like, oh, the magic. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it has been it has been a tough slog. I think, you know, Greg Anthony is doing his best LeVar Ball impersonation right now, trying to mm -hmm. use some of that father hype to, to build up maybe around Cole and around the rest of the team. But, you know, it, it's it kind of builds character in us fans that we don't get any of that national media attention. I think it does build community in a way because all of the news comes from really dedicated fans that are just either, you know, putting stuff out in the Twitter sphere uh, online or, you know, writing their own articles or doing their own podcasts. And so we're just, we're just fueling the fire right now. Peace. Yes. Yes. You and I, the rest, the rest of the community, we're just getting ready. We're waiting. We're biding our time. Like the character in this meme, just getting ready to show all these amateurs how we do it in Orlando even though I don't live in Orlando. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, Greg Anthony is <laughs> saying a lot of great stuff about Cole is I think great in a lot of aspects for the team uh, because he can say some stuff that maybe other people can't. And yeah. uh, he's kind of trying to help put them on the map a little bit. And I, I don't think it's just because his son's on the team. I think it's because he truly thinks there's some things there that deserve to be discussed. So I think it's good for everybody. I, I did appreciate that a lot. I mean, I'm not sure the exact motivation of the Greg Anthony stuff, there seemed like there was a little salt there. There was, it seemed like a little salty. I don't know his motivation, especially when he said that little piece about, uh, you know, my son had a pretty good rookie campaign and this and the team rewarded him by drafting another guard. It's like, Oh, okay. Seems a little put off, which I get. I understand that, you know, you want to have a hey, man. Your son. 
Yeah. So some of the best, some of the best foods taste a little better with a little salt on them. It's fine. A- amen. Amen. And, and that, that to your point, that's it. I don't care why he mm-hmm. started on the tirade and why he's been going hard in the magic community as of the past week. I just care that he's doing it. I mean, this guy yeah. is on TNT. He's a broadcaster. If you have someone in those circles, just dropping the name, you know, posting about it, that really helps just to bring some more eyeballs to the screen. And you do need stars and maybe Cole can be that guy or maybe one of our other players. People are also really intrigued with Markel and stuff too, but let's, let's keep it with Cole because I mean, talk about a star. I don't care how the national media view this man. This man is a, he's a man of the people. Peach. He, in one of his tweets, we have a, an unfortunate gentleman, a, a Davis King at Davis King one, four, four was in a bad spot. He tweeted at Cole Anthony and he said day 12 of trying at Cole Anthony to get me a ticket to my game, to the, to the game after my girlfriend cheated on me and isn't going to give me my tickets. She bought for me. Mm. Uh, my love was always greater for the magic than her. Some thing like that. It's cut off. Um, and then Cole says, hit up the Bryce. We got you. So Cole hooked this dude up with a ticket he hooked up davis king not sure what's going on davis king um if your girlfriend bought the tickets they are not your tickets (laughs) hey man (laughs) i just i'm throwing that out there i just you know she doesn't even follow the nba she bought those tickets for him and the fact she doesn't give them to him is just out of spite and cole stepped up and did the right thing and in a time of year when getting coal in your stocking is normally a bad thing, this guy dropped some tickets <laughs> and changed the whole view on coal. And I love it. Oh man. There would be some awkward energy in that building for Davis. If, I mean, he's going, you, you got to predict that his old lady's bringing her new lay to the game. Like that's, that's going to be tough. What if it's a jumbotron kiss cam situation? Oh, sir. No, Poor Davis. Dude. <laughs> I, well, I, Hey man, I think his seats are going to be better than hers. So I'm totally fine true. with it. <laughs> true. True. Hopefully he, he uh, has to crane his, he has to crane his neck too far back to see the screen. He's, yeah. He won't be, he'll be like yeah. courtside. This, the jumbotron doesn't even matter. It's all good. He's going to be hitting on the dance team. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's good. Davis, you just need to go in there dripping and you're going to come out with a lovely lady for yourself. Speaking of drip, mm. the Orlando magic put out a post that just said soon in reference to tonight's match soon. There's a photograph of some of the, some of the guys getting out of the bus coming to the stadium with some luggage. Maybe they're going to the hotel. Not really sure. They hashtagged it ultra drip magic together. Peach. I tweeted at you when I saw this because Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this has been a hot button button topic for us. When we watch the games at times, what say you about this quote unquote, ultra drip well i think we're- an old man his porch and some words of wisdom you kids you don't remember back in the day when guys weren't playing they were sitting on the bench in a suit they looked good the coaches don't look good anymore either they all look like they're going to the gym and they're hanging out in their basements wearing their sweatpants and their sweatshirts put on a suit put on a tie at the very least a button-up shirt maybe a sweater This is ridiculous. You all look like bums. Just because you're not in the game wearing a uniform doesn't mean you don't have to blend in with the team. Let's go. Pick up the fashion, boys. Uh, Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Something weird happened with the feed there. Not sure. Hopefully everything is good on your side, too. I I think we're back, Peach. And it's time now to move on to the next segment, What Mm -hmm. I Learned. And in this segment, ladies and gentlemen, Peach becomes the teacher. I become the student. And Peach lets us know what he learned in the previous set of games. So Peach, drop some knowledge on us, sir. All right. Well, get ready for, get ready for a lot of nonsense this week, because uh, <laughs> that's just how I was feeling. Uh, and it starts to get weirder the further we go. So here we go. Uh, on 1124, we took on Charlotte and a 106 to 99 loss. Uh, this was the, orange is the new blue and the city jerseys are here and they're great. And we finally get to see them playing. I was disappointed to see the same recycled court. Uh, mm-hmm. I was hoping to see a different court. It still has that ORL at center. Uh, this, this one 
clearly goes with their old orange unis and they just said i'll just put the orange one back out there that'll be fine because they didn't have that new magic you know the magic that looks like this in orange and they they could have fixed that up but I'm, maybe i'm nitpicking but i was hoping for that um i wa- i'm still not impressed with charlotte but i understand that they're better for, than us for now <laughs> uh, um lamello ball has the energy energy of your neighbor's punk kid you know, like you kind of just want to hit him, but you can't because there are rules against that. Uh, you know, he's goofy looking. He has some upside, but you really just want him to go away because he's cocky like Jordan uh, when he's more like a human Bugs Bunny. You know what I mean? So uh, but that's just just the vibe I got. I mean, we've seen Charlotte before. We know Bridges is good now and all this stuff. And, you know, we played well in this game. We were in it. And those are the kind of efforts you really want to see. You want to be in games and have a chance to win at the end. And we were there on this one. Um, then uh, still rocking the black and orange against the, uh, where were we? Where we? I'm have to cut that out. I don't know. But anyway, point is 11-26 versus Chicago, uh, 123 to 88 loss. And when I wrote that down, I was like, wow, was it that bad? And it was, I guess. Uh, Wendell Carter Jr. was playing with passion. Um, but the offense That's about it, that- though. <laughs> The offense did that thing where they were settling for shooting for threes and not trying to rebound, which upsets me greatly. And I'll get into that later. Um, uh, what did you think about the first look against the Bulls? Uh, the Vucevic got a nice little uh, ovation before the game for coming back uh, his first time back in Orlando. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't. I, I couldn't take my head off my my eyes off of after my lady mentioned it. Alex Caruso out there looking like a young Jeff Bezos. And it was really uncanny. And I don't know if Bezos has already found cloning technology and maybe Alex Crusoe is in fact Jeff Bezos who has cloned himself in a younger version and is trying to enter other fields like the NBA. It could be happening, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to space. Why not the Bulls? I guess I just learned something while we're doing what I learned. Okay. <laughs> That's the whole point of the segment, isn't it? I suppose it is. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes the student can teach the teacher. So it's all good here. 1127. We then took on the Cleveland Cavaliers, a 105 to 92 loss. This was disappointing for me. I, I was disappointed. Rolo got the start, which was Ooh. fun. Uh, this was a team missing two starters that was missing two starters. That's what the magic were on this day. Um, and, and people need to keep that in mind at all times. So we have two starting level players that are not playing. So you have to go into every game a little measured, but it showed off a lot in this game because I feel like if we'd had, well, even one of those four guys, it could have made the difference to get us over the hump. Cause I think this Cleveland team is not very good. Um, Okiki was doing a lot of spinning in this one. RJ wasn't hitting shots. The magic only had eight turnovers in this game. Oh, and yet we still should couldn't win that get game. it done. Eight turnovers yeah. is fantastic, by the way. Uh, and WCJ played well again, but this is the game where he got ejected at the end for throwing the glasses. Um, I feel like they were kind of falling off his head and he kind of just grabbed them and just kind of like whipped them in the ground. I feel like it was made a little bit more than it should have. I don't think he was necessarily trying to throw them at the ref as much as he was trying to get them that little thing. He gets tangled up in them sometimes and I see him messing with them. And I think they just, he kind of fell and just kind of threw him down. I feel like it was, yeah, like he, got he got hammered in the face. So it was like, yeah. Reasonably. And he got hammered with a fine. I think he got like 30 K or something like that. $35,000, something crazy. Yeah. I mean, I think I would have used my review on that one if I was coach. Yeah. Cause I don't think that was fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 1129. We took on Philly, uh, a one Oh one to 96 loss. This is again, another game that we're in and we're playing pretty well. Um, Gary Harris played well in these two games before and in this game. Andre Drummond was a problem for us. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> but our bench only produced 17 points. Only four bench guys even played in this game. It was a weird rotation. Sometimes if I have anything to say about Jamal Mosley, it's that his rotation sometimes is just all over the place. You're never really sure what to expect. And I get that he's trying to learn players and who they are and where they're going. And we really shouldn't be going 10, 12 people on our bench when we're trying to win games against teams like a Philly, but playing only four bench guys when you need bench points to win games, that's tough. Uh, yeah. The backboards were throw, showing a lot of brotherly love for the magic shots. Uh, they were using the glass better than, than I've seen before. And uh, at the end of the game, when we had chances to make moves and make plays, um, it wasn't wager time. It was Wagner time. And he bet on himself and he lost. Um, he took the ball and I feel like he was a little selfish maybe in the way he went after the shots. 
Um, I'm not really sure if that was the play for him to just kind of take it and go, but that was kind of how that game ended. And it deserved a better ending than it got, but they, they played pretty well in it. What well, something came out of one? some, something came good came out of that game. And that is it, while watching Cork Maz, you brought up a beautiful idea. You said that doesn't sound like a player. It sounds like a, a holiday event like Corkmas. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I'm happy to, I'm happy to inform you, Peach, that Corkmas will be happening in the Langan household uh, this Christmas Eve. Ooh, and we I will be, be there. So that's exciting. Yes, yes, yes. We will be popping a more expensive bottle of wine than we normally drink to have a little fun libations with the family on Corkmas, the first ever okay. Corkmas. Yeah. I, I look forward to this. I'm not usually a wine yeah. guy, but you know what? I'll make an exception. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. A, I'm not a stick in the mud. I like to have fun. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> What's next, Beach? What game? All Denver? right. Then we get, then we finally get into December. And yes, the game against Denver, the 108 to 103 victory. Cole Anthony returns to the lineup and he felt like money, man, which is oh. fantastic. Um, the Magic played really well in this game. This was exciting to see them play well against another Western Conference foe, like the, when they beat the Jazz, uh, to be able to, to to beat Denver like this was good because I like that they got to defeat the overrated Aaron Gordon. I'm going to mm. go ahead and say my thoughts on him Let right him now, real feel. briefly. Yeah. I always thought he was overrated. I didn't like him being on the Magic, and that was kind of the years where I fell off with his team. I never liked him. I thought, why are we paying this guy? He's not the guy, and I'm glad he's gone. Uh Nikola Jokic never lifts, bro. I mean, this guy has the all the arm definition of a wet seal. I mean, there is nothing. His arms are smooth. Like, does he even pick up his own bags when he goes to the grocery store? Like, he he it's crazy that this guy was the MVP. You look at his body and you're just like, there's no way this guy's an athlete, right? But but he is, and somehow he makes it work. God bless him because I don't go to the gym either. And <laughs> somehow he kind of makes it work. Oh, well, you guys have, have similar, similar builds, similar, similar builds, you and Jokic. Maybe you're you could be yeah, an MVP yeah. next year, dude. You need to get in there. <laughs> Start taking some reps, man. I'm not even the MVP of the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know if he was the MVP of that game because I had to look up Morris's first name. Monte Morris was mm. killing us at the elbow. Homie mm. should open a mac and cheese joint, how much he was living at the elbow. I, it wasn't as much him as it just shows you the gravity of Nikola Jokic. Because mm. as we're, you know, yes. as our players are trying to fight over those screens right at the elbow, you, you, they hover. You got to hover at Jokic yep. because he can drive there, he can shoot from there, or he can, you know, make a pass and kill you there. So, Monte Morris is feasting. I've been betting on him in my player props. I'm going to keep betting on him. He's eating that Mac and cheese from the elbow. I think he's like at, sitting at 11 and a half points. He's been getting that consistently. Monte Morris, lock it in, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Just for my degenerates out there. Got to sneak in a little gambling there, Peach. You know, I, I no, I get it. I'm all about it. So, uh, I'm all about it for you. Let's just yeah. uh, So then we move on to uh 12 3 versus Houston, a 118 to 116 loss. I got a lot to say about this game. I want to take a deep breath before I start. I was okay. pretty disappointed that we lose this game because I thought yep. this was our chance to have a win streak. Um, and I felt like Houston was a team that we can beat, we can go in, we can get things done. But here's what I learned Christian Wood is a person. I first heard about him in the pregame. I had never heard about him before, but after watching the pregame where uh, Steele and Turner talked about him highly, I was like, okay, I've got to watch out for this cat. And if there's anybody that any fan of any team, that's going to understand people don't know who you are. It's going to be a magic fan. Cause nobody knows who Franz Wagner is when he comes to town either. So like, yeah. you got to look up guys on the other team sometime, but I only knew one starter for Houston. Um, and that's Eric Gordon, who, my God, that guy is one of the great all-time scorers. I think this guy can always get a bucket. He ends up scoring the game winner for them, as a matter of fact. Steve Francis was in the house for some reason because, you know, hey, they got rid of him to the Orlando Magic, so why not come I back? played for both these play teams. Him. Okay, I'm going to come <laughs> Why don't you come back and uh, we'll, we'll play it again. But it was good to see Steve Francis there. The Rockets were wearing their mixtape jerseys, which are just terrible. It is way too much oh, of a bad thing. I love and, those. Uh, I think they look better on the Rockets who, by the way, might be the best looking dance team that I've seen so far this year, but I'll keep searching because it's my duty to report to you on which dance team I think is the best. Oh, what a faithful reporter. Thank you for your service, (laughs) Bish. I do what I can. You know, it's what I learned so I can teach it to everybody else so they understand. 
Uh, I don't know if people saw this on NBA.tv, but if you get a chance, go back and watch the match game that the guy's playing at, at halftime. Uh, it, it, he's an idiot, and it's just awful. It, it's just an operations nightmare. Um, <laughs> the baskets were way over miked in Houston. Every time there was a swish, it like echoed in my apartment. I mean, I've got the sound on like maybe nine or 10, and it was like, my God, they had three or four mics in those things. Chill out, Houston, with the mics in the basket <laughs> when the third the, quarter got started the rockets they got hard with a religious figure and that is known as christian wood he started to play real well in that third quarter and made himself known uh then the refs decided to love alperin shengun um and i don't like this guy at all i don't like his demeanor i don't like he's creepy i don't like the way he whispers the basketball he's taking a free throw uh, yeah what's he I, saying peach i don't know but I'm just I'm thinking that the refs might not be full Turks, but they were Turkish and they were definitely favoring. Him. <laughs> they also had a man named Garrison Matthews spelled with one T. Uh, I'm not sure where he lost it, um, but this guy has the name where I think he kind of realized, you know what? I got to get a sleeve so I appear tough because everyone's going to think Garrison Matthews is soft. But then once I start cooking this meth, but, you know, that's a story for another day. I call him Garrison Matthews. I don't like the guy. He rubs me the wrong way. Either way, we had a chance to win it at the end. I'm sure you saw the video of me reacting. My God, 18 yeah, turnovers in this one. The Magic started to turn it over a lot again. This, one, this loss hurt me more than probably any loss this season because I really felt like we were going to win it. Yeah. No, I felt, I felt the same way, Peach. Next was Golden State. Last one. And then la lastly, Golden State, a 126 to 95 loss. Uh, great start in the first quarter as they were looking to get the ball to the inside and get using their their inside advantage and i really liked what i saw early on and then they decided you know what let's just make this a, a three-point shooting contest and invite the golden state warriors worst idea ever i don't know what the heck we were thinking about there um you know, normally I watch a lot of Golden State games because they're West Coast games. I get home late from work. I get to see them. And I enjoy Curry walk, running around like a madman, chucking up threes. Yeah. It, it delights me. But this is the first time I'm watching it, and I'm like, I, I hate this. <laughs> so now I understand why the rest of the league's fans don't necessarily like Curry. But mad respect. The guy <laughs> can just put it in from anywhere. I'm not sure what a Lee is, but those uniforms that they were wearing too, they look like a number one dad uniform that you somebody gets you for like Father's Day. Yeah. <laughs> just that basic like blue red and, and and it says Lee on the back, so it's a three letter name. I just thought this looks like a Walmart jersey all the way here. Uh, not a big fan of those throwbacks. Uh, this game became one of those games where it was we just kind of felt like yikes, these guys are in the same league as us. Um, mm -hmm. Pretty quickly yeah. into the second quarter, things turned. And Reality check down. for sure. Overall, from all the games, though, I thought Harris played well. Um, the turnovers wait, wait, were down, wait, except what, for in the last couple games. You, what up? was that? What was? What did you just say? You thought, thought Har Harris played well? I gave him some props along the way, and I thought he played. He played really well. I think oh. the increased minutes for him were really dialing him in, and I'm okay. starting to see where he fits on the team now. Ah. Right now, once we have other guys come back from injury, I feel like when he goes back to the bench, maybe he's not going to contribute as much. So I think he's benefiting from the time he has. And frankly, I had to come up with some positives from this past week, and those are two of the positives, turnovers down and Harris playing well. And Wendell Carter Jr. balled out, by the way. Oh, yeah. He had a fantastic that. series of games. Hopefully he keeps that up. But this team ultimately needs to stop relying on the three-point shooting when we're not that good at it. And <laughs> yeah. when we're not, and if we're not hitting, you need to prepare to rebound. Because if we're not yeah. going to shoot a high percentage of them, at least prepare to not throw away the entire possession. And right now, that's driving me insane, guy. You know that because we talk yeah. a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, but yeah. It is getting hard to watch when we go into, let's shoot a three-pointer. No one inside then... the three-point line to rebound. Let's get back on defense and waste five possessions in a row just shooting a three. It's like, mm -hmm. if you're hot, all right. But if you're not, do something else. Sometimes on offense, it gets stale and stuff to watch. And that's what I learned. Fantastic. I knew that. I, that last fact I knew. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you didn't need this last <laughs> week to figure that one out. <laughs> well, now we're going to go into some, some other facts, some other things that people know and learn uh, in this segment of fact or fiction. So, it's the, the oldie and the goodie. I'm sure we've seen, you've seen this on many different pods before. We're going to provide a statement and then both of us will volleyball it back and forth, whether we think it is fact or fiction. 
Yeah, let me go ahead and toss you the first one because I just did a bunch of talking. All right, all right. <laughs> so uh, it kind of goes based on what we were just saying too, I think. Uh, so the young players' mentalities for the game are being negatively shaped by losing. We got a lot of young guys. What are your thoughts? I can see, I can see where this is coming from. Um, I, I don't want to go down the negative wormhole. I don't want to immediately believe this. So I'm going to say fiction. I'm going to hedge it by saying us magic players have trauma from the Jacques Vaughn years. And Ooh. from hearing about the interviews when, you know, Victor Oladipo left and there was a, there was a lot of talent on that team, you know, Oladipo, Tobias Harris, um, you know, big baby David. <laughs> stop it. You stop it right now. <laughs> I don't even know if he was on those teams. It was on that year, but well, Alfred Payton, you know, there was, there was guys that were very capable NBA players and then mm-hmm. turned into be really good NBA players uh, as well when they left. And in some post interviews, Victor Oladipo said there was just no direction. Nobody knew who was the alpha. Nobody knew the pecking order and who was supposed to take that last shot and how things went down. I think you kind of need that on an NBA team, especially when you get to win time, which is the fourth quarter. Then you got to know who's our guy, what's our rank order, who's going to be taking these shots. And that's when teams start to win, when they figure out their roles. And I think, you know, I'm actually pretty heartened that we're not going down that path because we actually, we haven't played a lot of close games. We've gotten blown out quite a bit, but when we have gotten to those fourth quarters, when we we have close moments, I feel like there is a very clear pecking order right now. The team is Cole Anthony's Cole's going to take that shot. I think it's very clear. And then Franz is the next guy. It's Mm -hmm. one of those two guys that are getting the shot. Now, when Markel comes back, when J.I. comes back, when we have our team that's healthy, Suggs is back, and and we're all growing together, can we figure that out? Does that get jostled a little bit, and how does that work out? I think that's the first thing. And the second thing is the coach. Uh, I I don't know Jacques Vaughn. I liked him. I definitely wasn't as tuned in as I am to the coach that Jamal Mosley is. But I think Jamal Mosley is a better leader than Jacques Vaughn. He just seems to have more of those, that, that larger vision that he seems to articulate in a way that connects with these players. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think those two things are allowing me to say fiction to this. If, if, ja- if Jacques Vaughn, if Jamal Mosley can keep players' eyes on the vision and the players can figure out how they fit. I don't think that all this losing this year is going to have a negative mental impact on the players' mindset moving forward. What do you think, Beach? Well, factor well, fiction. I love, on the, this. I love that the landscaper found a way to hedge his bet on <laughs> factor fiction. But you're right. You're right to do so. You're right to do so because I'm going to say fiction. But man, you better watch out because in a couple of shows, I could say fact. Yeah. Um, you want to I, say I fact right now. You want to say fact. Well, because I started to see it on Suggs' face before the injury. There was a couple games where you could really start to see it. He's not used to yeah. losing, and it really yeah. – it's a different mindset, man. When you're tough. good in college and you're playing in big games and all of a sudden you're just losing all the time, that will wear on you. That's a goddamn fact. Yeah. Now, this right now, it's fiction. But it could be if it continues this way. But like you said, you made a great point. Jamal Mosley, I think, is going to keep these guys – ahead we got to learn not just to play together not how to get better as players we also have to learn to win so yeah. they're going to get they're going to get there slowly it's not it's not going to happen this season probably yeah if it does it's not going to happen till later so fiction for now but watch out next one and we're just speaking about cole and how he factors into our winning or factor Davis fiction piece james <laughs> Cole Anthony is the most important player to our franchise's future. Well, I'm going to go fiction on this one. Um, I think Cole Anthony is the most important player to the franchise today. Um, But I'm not sure he's going to be the most important in the future. Yeah. It's the future piece. That's the, that's the prompt. 
Well, that's that's why I'm going fiction because I think okay. it might be Wendell Carter Jr. We're paying him a lot of money to be inside. Um, I think how well Fultz is when he comes back or Isaac, are they going to be able to play at the same level? Uh, and if they are, one could argue they are more important. I mean, we have a lot of guards and at some point in a couple of years, you got to decide who to pay, who not to pay. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for me to say that they're going to go with him. And I, I think they will. I love Cole. But yeah. If I had to go to the future, I'm going fiction. I am disagreeing with you, sir. And I am saying fact I'm, I'm riding with Greg Anthony. I'm riding with Greg Anthony. I love your son. He's great. We want him here forever. He's the franchise's future, Greg. We love him. Shout us out more on TNT bastard. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> love you, Greg. Uh, no, I, I, I heard a lot of the things that you were saying and I agree with them. There's a lot of question marks, but for me in considering this prompt, I can only count on what I can count on and what I know. I am also just as a magic fan who's been trained to do this, trying to temper my expectations about Markel and Jonathan when they played, they were phenomenal. You know, I, I but I don't, I want to leave that memory behind and I'm not expecting anything from them. I am basing this prompt that Cole is the most important player to our franchise's future on what our team is right now. And if I'm looking at our, our franchise's future, he's the guy that I want to keep above everybody. Wendell Carter, to your point, we've got him locked. He's a great piece, but is he, you know, this is a guard driven league. We need a guard. We need a star guard uh, to really compete, I think, or a star wing. And Cole could be that guy. He's in his second year right now. He's averaging pretty much 20 points, 19.6, 6.3 rebounds for a guard and 5.7 assists, um, shooting 42% from the field, 35% from three. That's great for a second-year player. He was, a, he was more inefficient last year. His, his efficiency continues to rise. If he can take just little jumps in, in his efficiency, just out of curiosity, I was trying to compare him to some guards. I looked at Damian Lillard's second year, and he's right there. I mean, he's, he's pretty much almost the same stat line as Damian Lillard. I did from the eye test. I didn't watch a lot of Damian Lillard in his second year. So I can't make that comparison. Even like a Kemba Walker. These are all guards that are about like six foot, six, two small guards. And I know Kemba's not high now because he's, his knees went and he's playing like crap in New York, but those Charlotte years, he was leading that squad to the playoffs year after year with nobody around him with Bismack Biombo, who all magic fans know about that. So Right now, and for our future, Cole Anthony is the most important player. Full stop, period. Yeah. But the guy so made the, business. We didn't even oh, mention yeah. Franz in there, and I feel like oh, he should be in there as well. Shit. Yeah. I mean, Franz, when I think of what's important to the future, but I'm the kind mm -hmm. of guy that likes to make a case for front course probably players more because that's yeah. what I know. But I get your point. It's a guard driven league. So Franz could be that guy, though. I mean, yeah. He's there are those point forwards that are dominating the league, but I'm going with Cole franchise, our player, most important player to our franchise's future. All right. I'm going to intro this next one because I, I think, you know, what I create the thumbnails for our YouTube videos and I try to make them kind of tantalizing. So people might want to click them, but I, I want, I'm very cognizant that I don't make them just clickbait. Like it's not completely mm -hmm. different from what we're talking about in the segment. But I do try to, you know, make it a little get juicy of a topic. Yeah, and give them a taste. Give them a taste. Yeah. So yeah. on our, on our last episodes, we were talking about the minutes and how, if RJ was going to get more or less minutes. And the thumbnail read, "Is RJ's fate sealed?" And there was a big bench next to it. And that wasn't truly what we talked about in the segment. It was adjacent. It was adjacent to that for sure. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't quite that topic. And I thought it was worthwhile to bring back. So the next prompt I have for you, Peach, is RJ's fate is sealed in Orlando as coming off the bench. Yeah, I mean, fact. Uh, it, I mean, right now, yeah, fact. I mean, he, he, I think he needs more time to develop, and he's not going to get it with us. I mean, yeah, especially when we have Suggs go out and he's not really getting more minutes. So it kind of tells me, okay, well, they've seen what they need to see out of him or they – know where he lies on the court i i feel like he has more to give 
But much like I was critical of Gary Harris for not really being sure what was going on, I don't think he was comfortable in his bench kind of role. I, I, he needed the more minutes to do more. And I think the may, same may be true for Hampton, but they don't have those minutes to give him necessarily all the time. And they're not going to get more minutes for him no. when other guys start coming back. So it's like, if he's not playing now, what is one left to do, but feel like that is it for at least this season. His favorite. Yeah. No, I, I got to agree with you. This is fact. Uh, he's really struggling in the last seven games since our last pod. He's averaging like six and a half points, 2.3 boards and assists shooting 29% from three, 37% from the field. And his minutes are going down uh, as a result. And I, in our last episode, we talked about the conversation he and Cole had and how he expressed frustration to Cole about his lack of playing time. Sure. And I sure. can't imagine he's happy with that playing time shrinking and shrinking, but he also has to step back and just kind of fairly assess the situation Sure. He's not playing as well as Harris. Damn, damn sure isn't taking the spot from Cole. Uh, you know, so he is certainly the third fiddle in there. And when Suggs comes back and Kel comes back, then you're really, you've got no argument. You've talked about it a lot before about using the G League affiliate. Mm -hmm. And I think it could be really negative, actually, for RJ's confidence. But at the same time, if he were to embrace that, it would be kind of awesome um, if he could go down and be the guy and really develop his game in whichever way he thought suited him. Because I feel like right now he's trying to fit himself into a puzzle piece that might not actually be the player he is. Yep. He's trying to put the square peg in the round hole, and it's just not really working yet. Right. So I'm hoping something clicks, but... It might I mean, not be the worst thing to go do a Lakeland magic stint for a little while. Yeah. I mean, you see this all the time in baseball and I see it a lot in the NHL as well. And it's a perfect thing to do when you've got a guy that's like not quite ready, but he needs a little more like how I, I, your point is valid. I mean, if, if Hampton was down there and they were running a ton of plays for him, yeah, let's see what he's got. Let's see what, yeah. he, you know, let, let's let him, have a little time to make a case for more minutes up here. Cause he's not right. It's hard to make an impression in seven or eight minutes a game, you know, like you feel yeah. like you're pressing in those six shots a game, you know, how the right. hell can you build any momentum with that? And right. I, unfortunately where we are, we're so depleted that RJ is right there in the rotation. I think if we had more of a healthy team, it would be an, an option that made a lot of sense. I have a feeling that right. we'll, might catch a lot of flack for this take that he should be doing some G League stints, but it's really pretty common right now around the league. That's the whole point of every team getting a G League affiliate was that so you could send guys up and down. The Westchester Knicks are playing in my home city of Bridgeport. I went and saw them against the Hawks, and both of the Hawks' number one picks are playing in their or their first round picks. I apologize. Are playing in the in their G League team, and because I mean the Hawks are are stacked right now. But I also see like guys like Deuce McBride, who just got called up to the Knicks main roster because Kemba was playing like crap, and he dropped like twenty five in the game that I saw. Mm -hmm. We're never going to see RJ drop twenty five in an NBA game if he doesn't get some more reps, and it might actually be the, the a good thing for him to to get some more practice being the guy get that game time. I can't reps. believe we got through a whole RJ Hampton bit without mentioning without a uh, RJ Hampton in joke. I just can't yeah. believe we did it. Oh wait, I got, I, I got it. You in. did it. You did it. No. <laughs> Even well, though he's not <laughs> Hampton, in. He's, he's Hampton in out right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. So the last one, we don't know where this came from, Peach and, and, and family. We, we're not sure where this this comment, this comparison came from. I seen it. <laughs> we we seen it. We seen it. We weren't sure if it was Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're sorry, whoever posted it originally. We can't give you a shout out. But someone in frustration of Mo Bamba's play compared him and used the name Bambi. So, mm -hmm. Peach, I'm asking you, Mo Bamba's comparison to Bambi is fair. Fact or fiction? Uh, I gotta say fact, 
Uh, you know, I'm a big Mo Bamba guy. I w- I'd love to be a bigger Mo Bamba guy. Uh, I, I haven't been using Bambi, but sometimes I just say, oh, it's Mo Bamba's here today. And then sometimes it's no Bamba, like when he's not playing. Uh, but he definitely can draw a comparison to Bambi. Sometimes he looks uncomfortable in his body and his movements are strange, like he's having trouble walking like a young deer. Um, but it's really just about the name, I think, that they do the comparison thing on. So that, that's, why, that's why I say it's fact and it's fair, because the name is similar and it's a Disney thing and the whole thing ties in. But like, I want to see him play like the strong, large deer that he could be a buck, if you will, you know, an NBA <laughs> champion. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, but that's what I'd like to see from him. But I could see why somebody would make that joke. And it's funny. It made me laugh when I saw it. Yeah, I, I you know, I love to have my stats to back up my ideas. I'm a very evidence based guy. Peach. I don't need shit for this. I don't need any stats for this. <laughs> I'm going off pure heart and emotion. The comparison is fair. That is a fact. Uh, and I love Mo Bamba, just like everyone else out there. I want, I want him to excel. But the man, I can't, the man's lost me money, all right? He's, there's just no consistency to his game. You, you don't know if he's going to put up 15 and, and 12 or 2 and 3. Like, it's just you can't count on him. And the thing that frustrates me the most, and maybe this is an unrealistic expectation, is just – his his perimeter game i mean he seems content to kick it by the three-point line and shoot that shot which mm-hmm. is fine he does hit him at a pretty high clip but why are you seven feet then like why <laughs> even have all of that <laughs> height I, it doesn't make and we talked about this before i can look at you know, going into a game for example the charlotte hornets that was one of the games last week they don't have they have Mason Plumley is their starting center right now. That's why there's mm-hmm. so much buzz around them getting Miles Turner or Demonte Sabonis. They have buzz, Mason nice. Plumley buzz um, <laughs> as their starting center. We should be able to feast. We have two legitimate big men. Mm-hmm. We should have been dunking all over them, mm-hmm. and they're running the paint on us somehow. Like it just it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, I he always kind of pick and pops. I want you to pick and roll big fella with some tenacity and some energy to the, to the basket. One of his, it, he frustrates me as a player because the strengths of his game seem to be opposed to each other. And what I mean by that is he's a good three point shooter and he's an excellent shot blocker. Yes. But if you're shooting threes, you're probably also going to be, guard, you know, with Wendell playing next to Wendell Carter, especially, you're going to be guarding their four, and you're, he's always out by the three point line. So he never, you know, he could be having, he has two, he's almost league leader in blocks. And I feel mm-hmm. like that's nothing. Like I feel as he though he's not even, he could have more, he could have way more, but he's not a down low guy. And so his strengths are kind of divergent in that way. And that frustrates me and that worries me. And I hope that he can put it together and get some consistency because that's the drum that we've all been beating from day one with Mo Bamba. That's why Steve Clifford wouldn't give him any burn because he didn't have that consistency. And we thought this was going to be the year coming in with a relationship with a coach that he seemed to love working in the, he's been in the starting lineup, which has been playing great statistically, but what is Mo Bamba? He's Bambi right now. Wow. I felt I felt you coming in hard there, but you know yeah. the only thing that you can bet on Mo Bamba for is blocks, and so yeah. that's why I did it in the last Score Cousins Championship. <laughs> that's true, that's true, and that's that's what we're going into next, Beach. So the Court Cousins Championship is our wagers. It's our competition between Jason and myself. Every episode, which is every two weeks, we have four wagers. At the end of a month, two episodes. We see who won more wagers and who will be crowned the Court Cousins champion for that mm-hmm. month. Mm-hmm. The first month, boom, the belt came to Bridgeport. You can see it there over my right shoulder. And, Peach, do you want to tell the people what happened? Uh, yeah, I will. Uh, you <laughs> had a 3-1 lead coming into this one, so I needed to sweep to take it because if there was a tie, it wasn't going to work. But 
I did get my first split mm. ever, as I won two and you won two. Uh, mm. I had you sound like blocks. a true magic fan trying to have moral victories right now. Continue. Yeah, man. That's what it's about. Uh, because honestly, I needed to approach this different. I'll get into that in a second. But okay. I won the Bomba blocks over. Uh, mm. He had 2.33, just barely over that 2.2 that we had. Um, and then uh, also I won by having the under. Um, yeah, I chose the over on Chuma going, averaging Chuma. 11 points, 11 and a half points. He let me down. Yep. And then you won the Wendell Carter Jr. Uh, over total points and rebounds because he balled out. And mm -hmm. I'm so glad I lost that one because I enjoyed watching him play in this run. And uh, the team turnovers, you selected the under and I got stuck with the over. <laughs> Let's just be clear on that one. Um, and they were only had 14.14 uh, turnovers in that stretch because they started out really good. Last two games were the 22 and 18. Otherwise, oh. this would have been a way under. So like, yeah. I like what I'm seeing that they're kind of turning things around in the turnover department. But nice. that said, a 2-2 two -two split, not good enough to take the title from you. Wipe the slate clean. We start fresh again. And this time I'm coming with new, I got a new mindset, sir. Okay. I haven't been playing this game right. All right. I'm going oh. into things and I've just kind of been like, oh uh, yeah, that's a good one. I guess we could challenge that one. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Now I'm coming with the heat, sir. Okay. I found a couple, I found a couple that I'm going to bring to you today that I think are going to hit a soft spot on you. And I want to really, really kind of put, put the grind on you. Cause right now you haven't had to work hard for this, but now things are going to get different. We're ratcheting it up soft spot you call me fat peach i'm coming for you i've had two in a row peach i'm about to start a dynasty right now three in a row i'm coming for it so the next set of games the next time we're going to record is right on the 22nd so that will be probably before the hawks game so we have in this next stretch sacramento kings tonight clippers lakers hawks miami nets and raptors that is seven games. So we our wagers are good for those seven games. Now, you want me to do the first one, or are you going to do the first one? Go ahead, go ahead, champ. <laughs> Ooh, there's some Greg Anthony saltiness in there. I love it. All right, Peach, I'm going to throw you the first one. And I know I just went on a whole tirade about how Mo Bamba has been, you know, not quite meeting the expectations of, of my own expectations. That's my fault. And that's my fault because mm -hmm. the young man minus the golden state game has been trending in the right direction. Look at his, his last five games or his last five games before that he was averaging 11.4 points, 9.4 rebounds on only just under 10 field goal attempts, 40% from the field, 49 or 40%. I'm sorry, from three point land, 49% from the field um, and averaging, you know, 20, almost 30 minutes a game to uh, close to 2.4 blocks. So he was having a great past five games. Compare that to his previous five games. He was only averaging 7.8 points, eight rebounds, 16% um, from three point, 40% from the field, two blocks. So he's really been stepping his game up these past five games. And something I have really been enjoying betting on, on, on FanDuel, which I've been using, is the total points. They allow you to, to group them together. You can't just, you can bet on just the points, just the rebounds, just the assists, but you can also put them together. And we're, of course, going to throw assists out. And we're talking about Mo Bamba. We're going to include blocks. So, Peach, over under 23 combined points, rebounds, and blocks for Mo Bamba in the next seven games. I got to tell you, this gives me a great idea for a segment on the show. It's going to be called No Bamba or Mo Bamba. <laughs> I'm going Mo Bamba. I'm taking the over Mo on Bamba. this one. I feel like okay. the fact that you're including the blocks on this one feels too juicy for me. Okay. I can't see him being under 23 for that long it just say he's a maybe a nine and nine guy on an average day but he tosses in mm -hmm. a couple of blocks i feel like every once in a while he goes for 14 to 18 boards you know he's not big on the point sheet a lot but i feel like he makes it up in other categories so i'm feeling well, good i hope you're right i hope i lose this one honestly i want to see mo playing better what do you got for me Pish? i hope so too because the uh the the your What's happening with Mo Bamba and you? It's it's a it's a weird yeah, energy I that I don't. Yeah, it's real adversarial right now, and I don't like it. You're right. I don't like it, Peach. 
Um, all right, so I'm going to uh, your boy T. Ross. Okay. Um, he's uh, shooting four and a half threes a game on average. Okay. Uh, he's only hitting about one point three, which is not great. Uh, I mean, so that makes not, us yeah. It makes his current average 0.296. You could say it's 300. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I'm saying. Over under 300 yeah. for him from the three point line and the next mm-hmm. set of games. Can he step it up? Okay. Yeah. Easy. Done. Yes. Over. Give me over 30%. I feel like T Ross is starting to hit his stride. 30% from three for him is cake normally. I, I think he's been a little nicked up. I don't know what's been going on, but he and Gary Harris have both been playing much better. And I'm going to hope that trend continues. I think T Ross is going to get more shots up and at a better percentage. So give me over 30% from T Ross from three for the next seven games. Book it. All right. Also hope that you're right on that one. I've seen the torch turn on and off from time to time, yeah. but definitely if he's going to throw them up from outside, I'd rather him hitting them. Amen. Amen. So next mm-hmm. I got for you Mo minutes. What? I'm not talking. I'm talking about the other Mo now. I'm not oh. talking about Mo Bamba. I'm talking about Mo Wagner. Ooh. Mo Wagner has been getting some increased minutes. I didn't know if it was a feeling, but when we looked into it, it actually actually has been in the last seven games, uh, minus one where he did not play. He's averaging four, 15.3 minutes. That is up uh, about four minutes from his season average of 11.5. So I'm going to set the line right at what he's been averaging over the past seven games. Do you think he's going to get more or less over under 15.3 minutes per game? Man, oh, I, hope you know, takes, is, I, have, I have a lean. I just hope you take this. This I is hope a you tough take one because when you really think about it, who's yeah. our main inside guy that comes off the bench? Well, it's Mo Wagner. Yeah. And uh, there, there's 48 minutes at a game and uh, mm-hmm. Wendell and uh, Mo, they're not playing all those minutes. So, uh, I'm gonna yeah, but they stagger them. Mo. Mo. Oh, I'm going to take the over Damn. here. I think 15.3 minutes. I've liked what I've seen from Mo when he comes in, he plays spirited. He's kind of that guy. He seems like he always wants to argue or anger. He gets yeah. a little burn somebody and like, I don't know. You need guys like that. And uh, he's doing it. He's doing it effectively. He's not taking away from what the rest of the team's trying to do. And he's shooting the three. Well, so he's kind mm-hmm. of earning the minutes and really who else we got that's tall that you're going to put out there. So, I mean, it's Mo Wagner or it's Lopez and they sometimes yeah. forget he's there. So. <laughs> <laughs> he's lounging he's lying behind yeah. the bench they just like he's just blending oh, in with the hardwood yeah. and they're just like oh i don't even i guess give me give me more it's i guess <laughs> yeah and i think you made this point i forget we were doing rj hampton when we when we bet on the rj hampton minutes you you also you took the i don't remember what you took there but i like your over here because looking at this next slate there are some tough games clips hawk clips lakers hawks miami nets um, those could all be bad. Those could be some bludgeonings right there. Mm-hmm. And you know, when we get into garbage time, Jamal coach Mosley has sometimes let the end of the bench play. And when mm-hmm. the end of the bench plays, Moritz Wagner is the center. So I, time. yeah, I think that plays in your favor. I, I don't like it, but, uh, good luck, sir. Last one. All right. Well, I know you're a huge Cole Anthony fan, so I wanted to try to put one of these in here. I got to try to try to get inside your head. Okay. Cole is averaging 19.6 points per game as of right now and Oof. 5.7 assists. So oh. I'm asking you the over under on total combined points and assists right now. I'm setting it at 26. So in this next set of games, over under. This is tough. This is tough. If you would have asked me before the Golden State game, I would have immediately said, over and I'm taking it and I'm feeling good about it. But then I bet on him to get over 19.6 points or something like that, which is what, what the line is here. And he, he kind of threw up a donut in that game. He, he shrank in the face of playing against Steph Curry. And I thought he would get up for that game. So uh, I, mm, and the 5.7 assists that is so dependent on other people hitting shots. <laughs> And we can't seem to do that a lot of times. True. true. So hmm, I am going to stand up with my boy, Greg Anthony, 
and take the over on this. Me and Greg believing in Cole to get those points. I think that he the assist is something I'm not sure about just because, again, that's dependent on others. And But I think that he can step up his scoring to like 22, 23, 24 sure. in these next few games, Absolutely. and that will give me the leeway that I need. So I'm going to go over 26 points and assists combined in the next set of games. Yes. Mm. I was trying to be very cerebral, and I feel like it worked. At least I made you really think about it. I thought you were going to take the under here, but that pe- that uh, optimist is still in there, and he came back. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter how many magic <laughs> losses I see. I just see the bright side of things, Peach. It's a blessing and a curse, I suppose. I see the bright side coming, too. I say two wins before we film our next show, too. I don't know how, but it's happening. All right, we're going to go out on that app optimism. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. If you're still with us, please like and subscribe. It helps a lot. Mm. Follow us on social media at court underscore cousins. And we'll see you in two weeks, ladies and gentlemen. Peace. Thanks for coming.